Hello and welcome to Banks and Markets. This is Benam and in this video I'm going to talk to you about the Portfolio Performance Composite Measure, Composite Portfolio Performance Measure, the Jensen Alpha. Okay, so I'm going to talk about Jensen Alpha, um, which is a, a very popular method of measuring manager's performance. Now, uh, see the equation to calculate the Jensen Alpha uh, was first developed by Jensen, therefore the name Jensen Alpha, in the paper uh, that was published in the Journal of Finance uh, in 1968. Eight. Now, what is important here first is what is alpha? So basically, the alpha means the, the difference between the actual return and the expected return. So if the actual return is higher than the expected return, it basically means the manager has been adding value, adding the alpha. Now, this is very popular. Therefore, you know, some wealth management companies, asset management companies may have names such as harvesting alpha. I think I have, I remember that it's something like this. Harvesting Alpha was the name of one of the asset management company. Um, but you see, the, the Harvesting Alpha or adding Alpha value uh, is is popular. Okay, Harvesting Alpha, um, or Alpha seeking kind of thing. Yeah. Um, now, uh, what I will do is um, I'll. I will show you one uh, simple numerical example, okay? Um, simple numerical example, um, and then I will show you this a slightly comprehensive example. In the case of simple numerical example, what we can do is we can simply assume that um, there is a mutual fund uh, and that is giving an uh, a return of let's say 25% okay and the the short term interest rate or treasury bill rate is let's say 5% and what we can also say is um, the return of a benchmark minus the treasury bill rate is let's say nine percent which is basically um, access uh, market return okay so uh, market access market access is nine percent what we're saying basically here is um, it is 14 percent uh, therefore minus market average is 40 minus uh, the treasury bill therefore nine percent okay and uh, what we can also say is beta of the mutual fund of the mutual uh, fund is um let's say double the market so let's say two so what is the jensen alpha okay uh, equal what so basically if you think of the formula, um, which I should have somewhere here, or where is the formula? Formula is here in the slide, in fact. This is the formula, yes. Um, so if you think of the formula, then what we need for this particular example is um, the access portfolio return which is 25 minus 5 that's it and then needs to be multiplied by the beta times the 
access market which is already given nine okay so that's what we get and that is Jensen alpha 0 0.036 let me check let me check what we've done see that's it and uh, C20 beta of the mutual fund is 2 and therefore this is um, but I didn't put the minus sign okay so now I get not when not 2 so that's the Jensen alpha for this particular example now I have to say that um, the positive alpha is here so therefore it is attractive to investors what, what it is suggesting is that this is an under there is an underpriced security uh, and better managers what they do is they, they consistently um, doing everything to add alpha okay now here is one comprehensive example and uh, using this example we can establish the understanding related to Jensen alpha even further so here again let me tell you what I've got is two portfolios returns market return for different periods um, and the risk-free rate for those periods so again I need to find out excess portfolio return for portfolio A excess return for portfolio B and excess return for market so that's what I'm going to do here which is equal portfolio A minus risk-free okay so that's 38.395 now in order for me to copy this what I'm going to do is lock the three no lock the column um, so this then means I can copy it across and also down for all these 10 periods now I need to find out portfolio A's average return average access return in fact so equal average so I get this uh, remember we want to find out the Jensen Alpha now I have found the average return for portfolio A portfolio B and market average in terms of access now the second thing I can do is find out the slope or the beta because in this example I'm not given the beta uh, so I need to find this one out so I can do equal slope which is the, the gradient of the line and then this is my y values and I need my x values which is this and I can lock this so that now I can copy across and now I have this and what will I get when I copy it here definitely I'm going to get a 1 because the beta for the markets will be equal to 1 okay that's fine now I need to do this to find out the the intercept for the for for the portfolio a given we've got those market returns so intercept is simply changing this to intercept and i get this now in fact this intercept itself is jensen alpha okay so we've already found this um, copy it for portfolio B this is the Jensen alpha for portfolio B now what will happen if I copy it over here so we said by definition Jensen alpha represents um, the value added by the portfolio manager when the market is neutral so if you do it for the market it should be equal to zero okay that's fine that's what we get okay so now if we do this intercept is basically the Jensen alpha now if we apply the formula approach we should get the same which basically means equal um, the this is the average is the excess uh, portfolio return excess from the bank from the risk-free rate then we need minus the beta which is this times the excess of the market 
returns. If you do this, you should get the same 2.81. So that's what we've got here. Similarly, here again, equal, this is the one times beta remains, uh, the beta is here, and then what you need is um, the market one. Okay, so the market one is here, and therefore you get, oh, sorry, the market one was not that one, um, the market one um, is um, 4.9, um, that's 13, this is it, times the beta, which is slope is 0 0.59, times what you need now is the is the is simply the um, access access return okay so that access is here here um, so we get I'll simply copy this here and you will see that I'm taking the right bit which is I should be having this one isn't it instead of instead of G13 I should have I13 that's it I13 so that's it okay so 1.28 is what I get so basically just to say that the intercept that we get from the regression is same as we get from the formula approach and this is also true um, that we get in the case of um, the market here it should be again equal to zero because um, of course I need to change um, because j30 is i13 uh, because um, w this is by definition now just to um, just to appreciate the same uh, discussion what we can do is we can construct um, a chart using XY scatter type of diagram now it's easier if I do it here so I've already written portfolio A here so equal if I take it this side and then drag it down okay um not not the portfolio average i do need the portfolio average just these two now if i insert the x y scatter diagram here i get this now if i click this add trend line and add equation on chart then i get these and this is 2.81 this is 1.15 you see exactly the same thing we've got here 2.81 1.15 okay so what does that mean this 2.81 which is the intercept is basically this point here this point here the slope line intersecting the y-axis line here is the 2.81 what is here in the origin is zero so when the market is zero market is neutral what is the value added by the portfolio manager 2.81 so that's that's the main idea behind the gen sum of okay so thank you very much